Where is Blue Origin in the space race? Somewhere, but not in orbit. This is also one of the direct consequences of copying SpaceX. Not only has Blue Origin achieved very few accomplishments, but imitating SpaceX has even hindered the company's development. Let's find out everything in today's episode. You've probably heard about the billionaire space race, right? It's a tale of ambition, money, and cutting-edge technology that's reshaped the U.S. space industry over the past two decades. Three names stand out the most. Jeff Bezos with Blue Origin, Richard Branson with Virgin Group, and Elon Musk with SpaceX. Out of these, Blue Origin and SpaceX are the true rivals. What's fascinating is how they each got started in such different ways. Jeff Bezos, backed by his multi-billion dollar fortune from Amazon, founded Blue Origin in 2000. Meanwhile, Elon Musk jumped into the game in 2002 with SpaceX, armed with just under $200 million from selling PayPal, a sum that frankly was way too small for a startup in the rocket business. In reality, SpaceX came close to bankruptcy multiple times. The first three launches of its Falcon 1 rocket all failed, burning through most of Musk's initial investment. The fourth launch in 2008 was their last chance. Had it failed, the company would have shut down. Fortunately, it succeeded. More than 20 years later, the landscape of the American space industry is unrecognizable. And now is the perfect time to look back. Simply put, today's U.S. space industry can be divided into two parts, SpaceX and everyone else. With Blue Origin as the closest competitor, the two companies share a lot of similarities, especially when you look at their rocket lines, Falcon and New Glenn. Both rockets have partial reusability, land on sea-based platforms, and are capable of carrying significant payloads to low Earth orbit, LEO, and geostationary transfer orbit, GTO. However, New Glenn has a bit of an edge over Falcon 9 in nearly every spec. Starting with size, New Glenn makes a big impression. Standing at 98 meters, it's taller than Falcon 9. Its 7-meter payload fairing is not only larger, but provides a distinct advantage in carrying big satellites. New Glenn's payload capacity is also impressive. It can lift 45,360 kilograms to LEO and 6,800 kilograms to lunar orbit. Compared to Falcon 9's 22,800 kilograms to LEO, that's a significant leap in power, although these numbers are theoretical until New Glenn makes its first flight. When it comes to landing tech, both rockets use engines that can restart mid-flight to control descent, though their landing gear setups differ slightly. New Glenn has six landing legs compared to Falcon 9's four. Interestingly, both companies have sea landing solutions, but due to New Glenn's larger size, Blue Origin invested in a much bigger landing ship, the Jacqueline, which measures 115 by 45 meters. In terms of aerodynamics, New Glenn has a somewhat more traditional design with fins and strakes, metal strips along the rocket body that add stability. In contrast, SpaceX takes a simpler approach with Falcon 9 relying only on grid fins. So, all in all, they're pretty similar, right? Why is that? Blue Origin, founded in 2000, two years before SpaceX, chose a more cautious and gradual approach, moving from suborbital to orbital flights. That's why we have New Shepard. New Shepard, their first rocket, only flies up to 100 kilometers and returns, serving as a stepping stone for Blue Origin to gain experience with reusable rockets. In contrast, Elon Musk's SpaceX went straight for orbital targets from day one. It was bold, but when it succeeded, it gave SpaceX a critical lead over Blue Origin in orbital payload technology. As a result, New Glenn arrived much later than Falcon 9. However, Blue Origin's delay in developing an orbital rocket allowed New Glenn to be designed with the benefit of seeing what already worked on Falcon 9. Not only could Blue Origin replicate certain proven systems, but they could also make New Glenn even more powerful than Falcon 9. While Blue Origin is working on creating a Falcon 9 Plus, SpaceX has made a giant leap forward with Starship. This isn't just a bigger rocket, it's a true revolution. Starship, with full reusability on both stages, can carry up to 100 tons to low Earth orbit. Even more importantly, its projected operating costs are so low they could completely reshape the economics of the space industry. Realizing the widening technological gap, Blue Origin has launched a research program to figure out how to reuse the second stage of New Glenn, aiming for full reusability like Starship. Clearly, Blue Origin is trying to run two races simultaneously, finishing New Glenn to compete with Falcon 9, while also advancing new technologies so they aren't left too far behind by Starship. This situation puts Blue Origin in a tough spot. They're forced to allocate resources toward two parallel development paths, all while still not having completed a single orbital flight. 
There's also a paradox in Blue Origin's approach. Coming in later gives them the advantage of learning from their competitors' successes and failures. However, this learn and follow strategy can become a trap. If you're just copying without any true innovation, you'll never surpass the company you're imitating. You'll always be one step behind. Blue Origin seems caught in a cycle of research and refinement rather than truly pushing forward. And this becomes especially clear when we look at the commercialization approach of both companies. Blue Origin's first product, New Shepard, has flown 28 missions yet only a handful of those flights have been paying customers. Here's the thing. In business, especially in a heavy industry like aerospace, having a solid financial plan is absolutely critical. Take ULA as a prime example with their Vulcan rocket project. Before moving forward with Vulcan, ULA conducted a thorough market analysis. They determined that contracts from the National Security Space Launch NSSL program would justify the development costs. They also had a clear motivation, the need to replace the Atlas V, which uses Russia's RD-180 engine, and the Delta IV Heavy, which costs a whopping $430 million per launch. ULA might not be aiming to go far, but they've calculated a practical approach to achieve the most efficient outcome for the near future. In the real business world, companies have to move fast and efficiently because resources are limited. They need to finish product development before they run out of money. SpaceX is a perfect example of this. They've faced bankruptcy multiple times, but that pressure pushed them to innovate and work faster. Meanwhile, Blue Origin only recently started bidding for military satellite launch contracts with the Pentagon and has secured some private customers for New Glenn. Jeff Bezos is just so rich. With his current investment of $2 billion per year into Blue Origin, he could fund the company for 100 years, even if it never turns a profit. This has led to a lack of urgency and efficiency in their process. Without the pressure of time and financial constraints, their development speed has been way too slow. What about SpaceX? They're hitting milestones that no one thought were possible. As of November 6th, they've completed 400 Falcon launches, an unprecedented achievement in the space industry. Just recently, they even managed to launch Falcon 9 three times in just 20 hours, from both coasts of the U.S., Florida and California completing their 112th, 113th, and 114th successful Falcon launches of the year. There is a positive sign that, it seems, Blue Origin has gone through a process of self-reflection. They finally realize that they can't reach the top of the market just by burning through cash and suing competitors. They've started taking action. Last year, they decided to appoint Dave Limp as CEO. Limp, with more than a decade of experience running Amazon's devices division, is known for his hands-on, results-oriented leadership style. Under his leadership, Blue Origin is now laser-focused on New Glenn, the key project that will put them in the space race. Limp quickly restructured development teams and pushed for a faster execution culture, something Blue Origin had been lacking for years. Unfortunately, SpaceX, with its Falcon rocket fleet launching more than 100 times per year, already holds the majority of space transportation contracts from now through 2030. From a market perspective, for Blue Origin to compete with SpaceX, they need to not only catch up technologically but also prove they can execute missions reliably and cost-effectively. Can Blue Origin stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with SpaceX? Yes but it will take at least two decades of continuous development. This is assuming the company can make significant technological breakthroughs and build a system that can directly compete with Starship. It's not impossible, but it will require a strong investment in resources, technology, and, most importantly, time. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.